Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to a studio tutorial video and we're bringing it back with some physics, a physics video, kind of like the OG videos. And finally, it's been a month. YouTube says four weeks, month, whatever. It's been way too long. I've got to upload. I keep saying the same thing, but you know, when am I going to get into this habit? When am I, I need some encouragement, but uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, today, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be exploring the linear velocity constraint, the physics constraint of linear velocity. So I have the two cubes set up here and we're going to go ahead and test on them and apply things to them. And we're going to run a bunch of science-y type tests. And I'm going to explain to you guys all about the physics constraint itself, everything like this. And it's going to be great. You guys are going to learn something and I hope you do. But before we get into it, did you guys like that new intro? I made it like literally yesterday or well, day before recording this and uh, I think it looks pretty cool and um, I don't know if I'll have sounds by then maybe it will but enough rambling I would appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button also like the video and especially shared it with your friends family and everyone like that it helps me grow at least I think it does and um, with that I guess we'll jump right into it so before I get started, I want to let you guys know that there isn't much information by Roblox on this constraint yet. So I will do my best to provide the most optimal explanation of what everything is doing. So based on Roblox physics and Roblox's explanation, the linear velocity constraint applies a force on a part or assembly, also known as an object or a model, to maintain a linear velocity. And the real life explanation of linear velocity is that it's the rate of change of displacement, also meaning how fast it's going when the object moves along a straight path. So pretty much roughly the same. Linear velocity basically means that the force applied on the part or object will stay focused in a linear or a straight manner, meaning that it will head in a straight line depending on which axis its velocity is moving on or what it may be moving towards, for example, another attachment. And that's the basic description of what linear velocity is, and now we're going to get into the properties of the constraint itself. The first of the properties, and the only limiting property for linear velocity, is max force. Max force, as covered before in other videos, does what it says. It will limit the maximum amount of force able to be applied on the part. For example, if I set the vector velocity to 10,000, 0, 0, which would mean in XYZ fashion, it's moving 10,000 on the X, it would not fully apply to 10,000 because of the limit of 1,000. In this case, though, it acts somewhat different, as in specifically for this constraint. The max force will actually determine if it's even able to move. If its max force is too low, the part itself will not move, even if you set the vector velocity to the exact same as the max force. This is determined by its density and other physical properties. For example, if it's too heavy, it needs a higher max force to be able to reach the nominal or required force to begin moving. I can't exactly remember if this is true for all the other constraints that I covered, but it definitely seems more extreme for this one. The next one we have is the relative to option, and we've covered this before as well. This decides how and where the linear velocity moves and on which axis. It could move based on the world axis and coordinates, another attachment, or itself and its own direction of velocity. What I mean by another attachment is in reference to the attachment one option. When selected, it will bring up the option to choose what attachment that will be, be it another attachment on another part or you know somewhere else in the world. Next we have Velocity Constraint Mode, which is a brand new property that I have never seen before. This allows you to drop down a list of options where you can determine what dimension the constraint will move based on. The options are Line, that being a straight line with no XYZ, also known as One Dimensional, and it will travel in one direction. Plane, a two-dimensional object where you can move only two axes, the X or the Y axis. So this will be up and down and forward and backward. And then finally you have the vector. 
which is a three-dimensional space that allows you to move on all three axes, meaning up, down, forward, backward, and side to side. And finally, of course, we have the velocity that moves and applies to the object it's on. Simply put, the higher you set this velocity in a certain direction or axis, the faster it'll go. The way velocity works is also dependent on the velocity constraint mode, which limits how many directions you can go in, like I just discussed. Alright guys, so that'll do it for the general explanation of linear velocity and all the properties like that. And now we're going to run some experiments. I was watching some of the recorded footage I made and a lot of the red parts, they were glitching out. And I don't know why. The properties are the same on this blue part as they were on the red part. Except that one started to go in its own directions and stuff. Like it was just freaking out. And it started to float in some cases. Like it just started going on the Y axis. It wasn't on line velocity constraint mode or plane or anything like this. It just started like doing what it wanted to. And it's supposed to act like this. It's supposed to continue in a straight direction. Even if it turns, it's just supposed to keep going straight. No matter which way it turns, anything it just keeps going straight. And that one was almost acting like a vector force. So that was a little strange, but now we're gonna go ahead and play around with it a bunch. And that's exactly what I'm going to do starting now. All right, everybody. So I've got some experiments built and set up around here. And we're going to go ahead and play around with linear velocity. You might be wondering what the green blocks are. Those are vector force. And they do look identical. And that is exactly why I am using them in this experiment. Because they look identical. And I got to see, are they very similar or are they very different? And we're going to see how they are different from each other. Because they do kind of act in a similar manner. They just aren't the same. So first one we have here is a speed test and how like how reactive is it? The limiting force on this is a thousand and that affects its velocity different from how this one would because there is no limiting force on it. We're just gonna see how this one goes. Oh yeah, they're anchored, I forgot. So I've gotta unanchor them to let them, watch them go. So this one seems like it slid a lot longer than this one. Like this one was just right away, immediate, immediately picked up speed. Yeah, this one's just right off the bat, just goes. I'm gonna go ahead and up the vector force on this one. We're gonna make it like, let's say 600 and see if it changes. Also do a plat center. I don't know if that will change its comparison to this. And linear velocity, let's see. If I change my max force, it'll still stay the same. That's just the limiting factor. So. Let's do like negative, negative five. Let's make it slower and see, does it still keep that constant speed? So yes, it does keep that constant speed and this one builds up. Oh my gosh, it's actually pushing it now. That's funny. I make the, the physical parts that need to move anchored and don't anchor the, the wall that needs to stop it. All right, and then we got some over here. We've got big block versus small block. And I also wanna show you guys this. When I rotate these and see which one moves. This one did not move. It's staying on the axis that it was given. And actually, if you change the linear velocity to relative attachment zero, which is itself, it'll actually stick with the part because like I said earlier, it's going based on its own direction. And, you know, what it chooses, not relative to the world. So, and that makes sense. When we change this one to world, it goes relative to the world and we'll constantly move on that axis. So basically, I guess, different default settings in this case. And with this, we're also gonna test like weight bearing and how able is it to move when you have someone on it. In this case, I'm gonna be the test dummy. We're gonna leave the settings the same for all of these. And then I'm gonna go into player mode and see how they change. Also, make sure to go play this game. I'll leave a link in the description. You can check out all the stuff I make and everything like that. It's got some nice music too. It's not moving in play here test mode. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try run test mode then. Okay, so we're gonna select these, make sure it works, yes. And then let's see if it works now. Yeah, of course it does. But it doesn't work when I'm playing. Yeah, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> then it flew off into outer space. That's great. Now let's test these, These should work the same as those. Yeah, no difference. And then once again, if I was to turn this, it's still followed that, that direction. And that's all based on the relative to. 
if I change this, it start going in the other direction. Flex, change it there and there. Yeah, just like that. And then next we have our aerial ones. I'm still in test mode because we can just test them here. And this is just to see how well they fly up in the sky. And based on what we saw here, I can guess or infer that they are gonna act the same way. And one's gonna be constant, one's gonna have to build up. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. See, it started out in last place, the green one. And then the blue one just maintains constant speed. And that holds up with the uh, definitions and whatnot. Catching up to it, we're catching up. <laughs> and now I've got some fun ones for you guys. This is a linear velocity constraint relative to this attachment one. And I've applied it to this part so we know where the center is. And I've also got some bowling. We're gonna see which one's better, the factor force or the linear velocity at bowling. I know they won't be the same exact forces, but I guess we'll see which one's better, a constant or a build up. So we're gonna do the maze one first, and this one should be pretty fun. It's just gonna, you know, show you what you can do with the attachment one. Let's drive it through the maze. Oh. All right, and then there we go. And now I'm gonna go ruin the bowling. Just kidding, I have to keep that. And now, now actually we can do the bowling. Let's do the bowling right now. And we're just gonna set them off. We're just gonna set them off and <laughs> we're gonna see what happens. Oh, oh, looks like, uh, looks like it definitely wiped out more pins. You know, I, I'm intrigued to see more. I'm intrigued to see more now. Now they should maybe be on equal footing. Yeah, that's at a thousand. If they knock down the same amount of pins, then we know. Oh, oh. They knocked down the same amount of pins. Hey, well, would you look at that? That means, I don't know, maybe it's by pure chance. They're not in the same order, so they definitely definitely didn't hit the same. So um, I guess that'll do it for our comparison between vector force and linear velocity and Honestly, that about sums up the experiments for linear velocity itself. There's not much more to explain, and I, I hope you guys learned something from those experiments. Testing, whatever you want to call it, fun, I don't know. I'm trying to make my videos better by, you know, including more things other than just an explanation. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I just said, I hope you learned something. If you did, you walked away with something new, please make sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Also comment if you like the video or if you want to see more content, anything you want me to cover. And especially, especially don't forget to share the video with your friends, family, everything like that. Also join the discord down below, all those cool things. You can play this game. I'll leave a link it down there as well. You can pretty much find everything down there, Twitch stream, all of it. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you come back for more and I will see you in the next one.